Hey guys, um, I'm going to explain to you the Renin Angiotensin Aldosterone system and I'm pretty much going to talk about the most important and the most basic things that you need to know about this system. Okay, a uh, couple of things before we start. Uh, the system comes into play when there is low blood pressure or also if there is low sodium concentration in our body. Okay, another thing you need to know is that this is a chronic way of increasing blood pressure or compensating blood pressure. Uh, the acute way will be uh, through the ANS, neurotransmitters such as norepinephrine, activating the alpha-1 uh, receptors on your vessels, causing vasoconstriction, and, um, or also activating beta-1 receptors on your heart and increasing cardiac output. Um, so that's the acute way. This is the chronic way. The reason, the reason it's chronic is because we're talking about enzymes and uh, hormones here. So if you think about it, it's going to be a lot more time required to synthesize these uh, enzymes, which are proteins, and all these uh, 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 hormones that we're going to talk about. So this is why it's chronic. Okay, let's start. Uh, so we said low blood pressure. So right now, let's assume there's low blood pressure. So what's going to happen? Well, kidneys, they require blood too. Uh, they actually are the most selfish organ in our body and they require that they're 25% of share at all times. So if this is the afferent arterial and this is the efferent arterial, blood's going to come through here and it's going to get filtered all the glucose, amino acids, sodium, potassium, everything is going to get filtered. Some get reabsorbed. Some of the stuff that we don't need, you know, goes through the nephron and then gets excreted into the urine. Um, so it's very vital for the nephrons to always have their blood coming through because if they can't work, if they can't filter, they die. Okay? So if there's low blood pressure, we got these basal receptors located in our afferent arterioles called the juxtaglomeral cells. So they'll be around this area. As blood's coming in, these cells are gonna, they're bare receptors, so they're gonna uh, sense there is low blood pressure. So what they're gonna do, they're gonna release these enzymes called renin. So renin, what does renin do? Like every other enzyme, it converts one reaction to another. So what does it convert? Well, it's going to convert angiotensinogen okay, to angiotensin 1. Okay, so it's going to have a positive effect in this reaction here. What happens to angiotensin 1? Well, that also gets converted to another product called angiotensin 2. But where does it happen? Well, angiotensin 1 travels in blood, goes into our lungs. Assume this is the lungs right here. And then it gets converted to angiotensin 2. Sorry. Uh, so what, what is the enzyme here that converts this reaction? Uh, it's called ACE. Okay. What does it stand for? Angiotensin converting enzyme. It's converting angiotensin to another angiotensin. And uh, if you want to talk about pharmacology, we have ACE inhibitors that will inhibit this reaction. Um, anyway, once we have angiotensin 2, it does two different things. Okay. Two different things that we are concerned about. Uh, the first thing it does, if you look at the name angiotensin, what does that mean? Angio means vessels, blood vessels. Tensin means tension. So it's going to call vasoconstriction. What is it going to do that? On our efferent arterioles. This is, assume this is vasoconstriction. So what does that do? Well, blood still coming through the afferent, leaving the efferent, but since there is like a roadblock 
assume there's a roadblock here, what's going to happen? There's going to be traffic here. Okay, all the blood's going to accumulate behind this point. Okay, and we're going to have decrease in uh, blood flow, right? Because there's traffic, so you're going to drive slower. So there's going to be decrease in blood flow. Okay, and then when there's decrease in blood flow, there's going to so many cars going to you know if it's so many blood is cars like traffic and cars right now. There's going to be so many cars at this point, and what's going to happen? We're going to increase our hydrostatic pressure, right? And what does hydrostatic pressure uh, indicates? Well, every time there's increase in hydrostatic pressure, you must know that it favors filtration. So we're going to have increased filtration, which is going to start filtering our products into the into the nephron, the kidney. Um, so this is how it's compensating the low blood pressure. This is one way. Another way is angiotensin II is going to have an effect on adrenal glands where they're located on top of our kidneys. This is kidney. This is adrenal glands. What is it going to affect? What's well, going to affect? Let's cut the adrenal glands to its different sections, this being the medulla which medulla uh, secretes what? Catecholamines, right? Uh, but our main focus is angiotensin II, where it's going to go into the first zone called zona glomerulosa, okay? And it's going to have an effect on synthesis of aldosterone, okay? So let me move to the other side. So we're going to have aldosterone. Now what does aldosterone do? Well, aldosterone, it works on two different cells. One called principal cells. And one called alpha intraplatelet cells. So what is what is it going to do on principal cells? What it does on principal cells, we have a pump here. Okay, it's a sodium potassium pump. So let me draw this. Okay, so aldosterone works on principal cells. What it does, it causes reabsorption of sodium. So sodium is going to come in, right? And what does always follow sodium? Water. So water is going to come in. So what is and what is sodium getting exchanged with here? Potassium. So potassium is going to get secreted. I'll just write it here. So on principal cells, it's going to uh, reabsorb sodium and water and secrete potassium into our duct. Uh, so if, if you have an increase in aldosterone, what, what are you going to get? You're going to get hypokalemia because you're getting rid of all your potassium. And you're going to get hypertension, maybe severe hypertension, because you're keep, you know, reabsorbing sodium and water, you're increasing your blood pressure, and at the same time, you're getting rid of your potassium. Um, Another thing that uh, aldosterone does on alpha clated, uh, alpha intercalated discs, there's an ATP pump. Okay. And what this pump does, it pumps hydrogen ions into our duct. And what does that do? Well, it um, acidifies our urine. This is the way you acidify your urine. So we talked about two mechanisms through the renin angiotensin aldosterone system which will compensate low blood pressure. One was this right here, okay, we increase blood pressure, 
The other one was on this area where we increased blood pressure. Okay, so that completes, uh, I guess, this lecture. Um, if you have any questions, please uh, write your comment or message me. And please subscribe and like my videos if you like the video. And uh, I will be making more videos in your future. So uh, if I made any mistakes or if I didn't explain something well, please, uh, again, make a comment or send me a message and I'll, I'll be glad to explain further and so we can understand better. Um, so good luck, thank you, and have a good day.